Good evening, darlings. <laughs> Thanks for the wait. Tonight's December 22nd, 2021. So excited to see. Hey. <laughs> Talking about praying and petitioning. It's the most important information for a brand new year in 2022. So tonight, I just want you to know that I'm so thankful that you're here and those that are joining us live. Praying and petitioning is our topic for the rest of the year. Ha ha ha, because we only have one more week, but we will go into the next year possibly. But you got to be here next week because you never heard nothing like it. Um, because we're going to actually dissect the Lord's Prayer and give you so much information that you will, you've never even dreamed or heard of. Now, God is so excited, too, because as you are his citizens, his kings and his sons, he's happy that you're here because when you're here and you're taking in the information, because why people are having trouble in their lives or marriages, having trouble with anything, is because they lack knowledge. So when you seek wisdom and you, you go and he says, because we got it, we want to get things, right? We're always looking for things. Um, I need this thing. I need that thing. I need a lot of things, right? Uh, I need things to eat. I need things to do. I need things to wear. But he's saying when you get anything, what you should be getting, first thing you should get is wisdom and knowledge. That's above everything. Because when you have wisdom and knowledge, that's when life can start to flow and to go naturally. You don't even have to pray because you're following the laws and commandments naturally. But when you do need to pray, um, that's why we're going to study and learn tonight on how to talk to God and get some answers. Isn't that cool? Amen. Now, the question is, has anybody ever felt like the disciples before? When it talks about it in Luke 11, 1, is like when I asked you if you ever felt like the disciples is you ever felt like when they said Jesus teach us to pray have you ever felt like you're praying but you don't really know if you're doing it right okay I know I've, I've done that quite a bit and I don't want to waste time so that's why I believe God really wants us to grasp this message so here in Luke um, 11 11 look at that I'm saying 11 1 it tells us right here one day Jesus was praying in a certain place when he finished one of his disciples said to him Lord say it with me teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples this is why um, we don't we don't we kind of need to make sure that we have this knowledge on understanding prayer so then Jesus, he's proceeded to give them something. Okay, and this is where people have been messing up for a hundred years. So don't get offended, just receive what God says. He gave them a model prayer. And when you think about the Lord's Prayer that I will show you in a little while, I want you to write down a word. And I'm going to tell you, um, I don't know if I wrote it. I might have wrote it on the next slide. But... This model to pray after is after an illustration. He illustrates to us in the word of God. So illustration, if you're taking notes, means the action or fact to prove something. So he's illustrating. He wants us to understand that this is a matter of fact the illustration, he's going to prove something. So when God gave this prayer, called the Lord's Prayer, it's, bas it's basically an illustration model. Okay? So tonight, we're going to just get started with the basic information. Hi! Good to see you, sweetheart. Wow. Okay, now I want you to... I want you to take a picture of some of these pictures tonight... Because later, when you don't feel like you're getting pray your answers, prayer or your answers to your prayers or your prayers answered, you will have the information that's coming from the Word of God. So this is what it's telling us. So this illustration model here was God. He gave us a model prayer, which is the procedure that you should use when you approach 
this government of heaven to make a petition. It's very, very important for you to never forget this information. So here's God. He's telling us exactly when he because when you when you you ever go to anybody ever been to court? Had to go before a judge? And what do they do? They say we pray to the courts, right? Which means petitioning. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of information about petitioning. Well, I can't see it, so I'm gonna have to go up here. Another word for petitioning, I circled it, it's hard to see, but it's a plea, a pressing repoint, a need, invoking recourse, um, question, praying, see? So blessing, prayer, is all these other sentiments for petitioning. So I wanted you to see that they go hand in hand. Because this model prayer, because if you, who's not playing anymore? Who wants to get some action here? Who's got 20 more years? We got 20 minutes. Let's do it. Okay? We have to understand this. So when we study this prayer that he gave us, is everything that he puts in the model prayer of the Lord's Prayer, it was to give you all the tools so you can actually approach your government and you, when you go to the government and you go to pray, wherever you are, you're on your bike, you could be in the shower, you could be on your knees, you go to your government, you approach it, and guess what happens? You're going to get answers. That's what you're going to get. That's why it's really important for you to understand. And what you don't understand, at the end of the class, I want you to ask me questions. Okay? Now watch what happens in Matthew channel, channel 6. Chapter 6, 7 and 8. Let's say it together, please. And when you pray, do not use, what's that say? Vain what? Repetitions as the heathen do. For they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them. For your Father knows the things that you have need of before you even ask Him. You know, I thought that was really interesting. Before you even ask God, He already knows everything you need. Think about that for a minute. I was studying this message today, and when I was reading that verse, mm, that was really cool. I want you to think about what Jesus is telling us. Before you even ask, He says... I already know what you need. So how do we get the key to heaven to open the door to get it? That's what you're going to learn tonight. So good. Now, when you take a picture of this slide or you write down this reference so you have it available to your fingertips, this is clear instructions for us not to do, he calls it, babbling. We're not supposed to, blah, 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 like the Gentiles did. They were always like talking and trying to probably just talking to pray to hear their own voice. But they thought that they were going to get their prayers answered because they kept repeating words and repeating words again and again. They just kept repeating words over and over. That's repetition. Okay. He says, please don't be like them. Don't be just rambling, rambling, rambling. He says, instead, I want you um, to remember something. When you're just freaking out all the time and you need an answer to prayer tonight, who needs answers to prayers tonight? Okay, so I'm going to get them tonight. Don't think anything less than what you're going to get. Don't be like them. They pray thousands of prayers. They pray sometimes eight to ten hours a day. But they don't know what they're saying. He's telling us, instead, he's telling, your father knows what you need. Even before you even open your mouth and ask him. Isn't that so cool? So God doesn't need you to have a prayer that you might have. He doesn't need you to be repeating it all day long because he says he knows that it's usually people. This is why he's trying to show us some things. 
it's usually people that have these repetitions is they don't have no idea, he says, what they're even praying for. But they keep saying them because they were told by somebody that if you keep saying these prayers, your sins are going to be forgiven. And God's saying, no, they're not because you don't even know what you're saying. He says when they're speaking them, they're speaking them with no understanding of what that actually means. That's why I promised you guys next week, you can't miss it. If you know anybody that really wants to know the whole um, the whole kit and caboodle on this Lord's Prayer, you cannot miss it. Now tonight, when we study in this Word of God, this is what he's saying to us. And this verse is when you pray, do not use vain repetitions, and they know that they think their words are going to be heard. He says, don't be like them. Your Father knows what you need. When you start to make a petition and you're starting to pray, he says, don't send the person that you're writing an actual template, uh, illustration, a model prayer. We keep sending God these illustrations back to him. He, he gave us an illustration. Who has a computer at home? Okay, who goes on Word document and it gives you a model or an illustration on how to write something? Maybe it's your a resume, right? What do you do with that? Do you just send it back to the, to the people that you want to get a job that they sent you here? Fill this out? you got to actually fill it in. Does it make sense? Okay. So when we fill it in, we fill it in with the contents of what this prayer actually it means. And so when we understand this prayer, the Lord's Prayer, this is what we're going to get. We're going to get substance. That's the difference. But it's, I'm not going to get ahead of myself. Now when the disciples, they went around, they asked Jesus, Jesus, we've been watching you. We notice John's getting his prayers answered, but we're not. Teach us how to pray, remember? So he was asking, if you're taking notes, this is important. And a lot of people that already know this, they could give you a story, what I've already taught them, but this is important today. Teach me how to write a memo to an executive. That's what they were saying to Jesus. Teach me how to actually write this out and send this to the king. So when you're writing a memo to an executive person, that means you're actually taking the time to make this prayer yours. Teach me how to, this is the best part. Oh, I love this so much. It's so good to see. Teach me how to approach a judge. What do you, who do you think you guys are talking to anyway? The air? Are you talking to something called God that's in the existence? You're talking to the king of kings and the lord of lords. The judge that has the hammer that's going to say, yes, I will do it. Or no, because he hears every single prayer. If you're saying, listen, teach me how to approach a judge in a court so they don't throw me out of the courtroom. Because that's happened to me before I got thrown out of the courtroom. <laughs> because I went like this. The guy didn't like blondes. He said, get out of here. Because I was fixing my dad's leg. But see, there's etiquette, right? When you walk in the courtroom, can you just walk in the courtroom and say, hey, what's going on, judge? Oh, he would throw you right in slammer. Right? Teach me how to stand before a judge in a courtroom. That's what the disciples was asking Jesus. Good. You must put this information. What? Tonight, right now. What? You want in a model template. A model illustration. Jesus, he gave us this model prayer and this procedure. It's a procedure that we will be studying, like I said, for a few weeks. And it's for you to approach your Father God, who is the judge. You're going to approach this whole government called heaven. And you're going to learn how to pray because, guess why? Because you are a citizen of this kingdom. 
You are a citizen of heaven, right? You have two citizenships. Yeah, you're right now. You're here. Take dominion. Take authority over this whole world. Because once you call heaven to bring that glory down, we learned last week. So here's what he's telling you. Put whatever you need on a template. Even if it's in your mouth. But I'm telling you, you write it out, you're going to get answers. Amen? Amen. And so it's been laid out, God was showing us in the Lord's Prayer, which I'm going to show you in a minute. But he's telling you this. Here's the structure, and this is how I want you to do it. I wish we could do it all tonight. We would have been here two hours. But we're getting the understanding tonight. See, the Lord's Prayer that you read, okay, should come straight from a petition. How many people have ever ran for office or, or somebody asked you to sign a petition so they could get on the ballot, right? So here's a petition. And if you don't have that piece of paper, it's no petition, right? So you're taking this Lord's Prayer and it's going to come straight from a petition. And when you read, because when you repeat this Lord's Prayer and repetition has no meaning. There's no meaning. It, you might understand and have a meaning. God knows your heart. But I'm telling you that the meaning of the Lord's Prayer is completely opposite of what we've been taught. So this is what we need to do. We are going to be planning to break down this prayer as we get to it. Because when you put this down, it comes from information. And everybody is individually has their own heart. Like my husband could be petitioning something exactly the, what, what I want, but we have two different hearts, so we petition differently. Okay? Now, God wants us to send him something. And he says, you write out this petition, or when you speak this petition, you come before this court, he's telling you, I want you to send me the substance of things hoped for, things that you haven't even seen yet, right? So here you are, that you are not to keep sending him the template. He keeps getting this empty template. Now, there's a major difference between a template and something that you felt out what that model prayer is. Now, the first thing you want to do, why we're here tonight. When you say, teach me, Lord, how to prepare a case. Because you have something inside of you, if you've been saved, and I'm pretty sure everybody's been saved here, that has never left you. He will never forsake you. And he has actually uh, somebody that stays with you until you get out of this beast. He's called, I didn't talk about him tonight because I wanted to move on, but you know who he is. I've taught on him before. It's the counselor, right? The Holy Spirit. Teach me, Lord, to prepare a case for me to get what I have rightfully, deservingly from a court in heaven. It's my rights. That's the question. That's the question. Teach me how to proceed to get what I want. Does that make any sense to you guys? Are you guys following me? Does it make sense so far? Okay. Now, if you take it out of context, meaning if you take it out of this kingdom format that he's telling us, then guess what? If you do it any other way, that's called a religious act. You're doing it in a religious format. You're doing it how you've been taught, but you're not doing it the way God's asking us to do something. Do you remember when Jesus was called the Messiah? The Messiah is coming in the Old Testament. And get me, let me, if you're taking note, Messiah means King, it's not a religious word. So when you say Messiah is going to be born on Christmas Day, the Messiah, the King is coming. That's what you're talking about, not a religion. So guess what that means? And this is so interesting, honey. Guess what the King is? He's a politician. That's why the government was on his shoulders. Does a king govern over his territory? Yes. He's a politician then. So guess what that means? He's a politician and he's also called the government. 
They said, this is what they said. Let's read it together. Matthew 16, 15 and 16. He said unto them, when Jesus was talking to his disciples, he said, But whom say you that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, What? Thou art what? The Christ. The Christ, the Son of the living God. So guess what the word Christ means if you're taking notes? Because if you know what, if you go back and look at your notes tonight, and you go to the Lord in prayer, and you start to run in this church the next time you see me, or you be calling me up because you figured out what I'm teaching you. It's not that hard, but it seems like a puzzle. The word Christ means anointed king. That's who you're going to talk to in a minute here. So we don't come to a king as if you're, you're, you're coming to the king as some mushy person so you can actually walk into the king and, and be like, oh, you know, king, you know, let me see if I can con you into liking me. Let me see if I can and, and try to manipulate you into doing what I want right now. I'll be so good. You know we all said it. So watch this slide is something that you need to understand when you're praying. A king is a what? It's a government that has, what's it say? Legal proceedings. Legal proceedings having boundaries. That's what a king is. So when you pray right now, I'm just, let's just talk it out for just a second. When you pray right now, you just be like, Lord, I'm praying. For God, I'm praying. I don't even know what to pray. You're just trying to think, what am I doing? Well, I'm trying to get you in a mindset to make you see what you're doing here. So you can actually have what you pray for. Okay. Watch. I want whoever has... Does anybody have one of these here tonight? Anybody? Hold up your Bible. One... Phone, two, three, phone, four. You got one, five? Everybody else? Phone, okay. Now I want to show you something because you can't see it in your phone. What is this Bible called? New Testament. Yeah. Yep. Yep. What else? You got one. You said it. What else? Word of God. It's Word of God, yeah. The will of God. Huh? The will of God. Yeah, you're right. You're all right. It's the Old and New Testament. It's what it's called. Look it up. Watch. My Bible looks really rough, but it's not. Old and New Testament. Do you see it? It's free. This is a free look. <laughs> you see that? Okay, now we're getting ready to get G to it. You didn't have to pay to go to law school, but you're learning everything that you need just like a lawyer would go to school. Okay. You ready? A very important next statement. I'm going to make a statement. This book is not for emotions. Yeah, you could be emotional watching it, reading it, but it's not a book for emotions. If you go, anybody know a lawyer? Call your lawyer and ask them this question. Say, in this book that I have, it's called the Bible, it's called the Old and New Testament, the lawyer will actually tell you this book has nothing to do with religion. Ask them. It has to do with, when they go to school, like a lawyer has to go to school, a lawyer has to study something. And you know what they study? A testament. A testament is a legal document. So this is, guess what? legal document. People take their Bibles, they throw them down, they just forget about them, they don't even think about them, they don't take no action, and that is a legal document that you just whip it around and don't even care for it because you don't understand 
The power that it carries is so powerful. So here it is. I'm going to show you what, what the lawyer studied, just to give you an idea, because you might have seen this before. But look at this. What's it called? Last Talks about I'm an adult residing here in California, Article 1, Article 2. So this is, this is in front of a judge right now, and this is somebody's last will and testament. And that's why I wanted to show you what a lawyer does. They study this stuff. Now, Please write this down. In the Bible, in your hand right now, because you guys show me it, write it down. Because this is what this is where you've been not remembered. This is a legal document. Write that down, please. A legal document. So when you go into a legal courtroom with a case before the judge, okay? Holy Spirit. It's supposed to tell you what to say, but the lawyer, he goes with you because he wants to prove your case. That's why you have to pay all that money for a lawyer. <laughs> now, who does a lawyer bring to the courtroom with them? Does anybody know who they bring with them to help you? Witness. A witness. Right. Okay. What does a witness do? Oh, praise God for those testifying. How big for us? They testify, I guess, guess what? Of what happened. What happens, God, next? Legal document. It's going to tell you what's going to happen. But do you believe it? So when you go before the courtroom... The courtroom that you're about ready to go before is called the throne room of heaven. But you must, must, listen, you must use this legal document for you to make a case. You don't need me, pastor. You can make a case yourself. Let me show you this next slide. What does the word testament mean? It's a what? Say it with me. Exist. And it's what? True. It's proof. It's evidence. Sign of proof. It's very clear. <laughs> you should get ready to jump out of your skin. That should get you excited. Because you're understanding that you make a statement of who you believe in what you represent everywhere you go and when you say it and you believe it, he says he will do it, but you'll see. So you're going to actually you go into prayer and you're sitting on the witness stand and you're telling God I want you to write this down. This is really important because this is, this is your prayer. You don't write it down, I can't help you, right? Write this down. Based on the law, Heavenly Father, based on the word of God, based on this document, this is the law, what does it say? You promised me this. You promised me health. You promised to prosper me. But you'll see. And I, what? Qualify as a law-abiding citizen. So, I have a what? Right. You have a right what else does right mean? It means you have you got justice is about ready to be served, and you're covered with his righteousness. Your righteousness is a filthy rag. But Lord, once you, when I got saved, you covered me with your righteousness. So now I'm a citizen of this kingdom, and I have a right, and you promised me in this book that I qualify as a citizen, so I get to demand what this legal document has promised me. That's petitioning. Petitioning means what? Prayer. Ooh. Now, God, he hears every single prayer. So stop saying, God didn't hear my prayer. God's not listening to me. He's just not interested in what I got to say. No, he hears them. He hears and he answers prayer. And he says, just wait until you first learn 
how I work as a judge in this courtroom. Now, Peter, James, and John, they were so very close to Jesus. They were his buddies. But guess what? It was so interesting to me today. Honey, I was going to tell you, but I was just thinking about it. When my daughter passed our daughter when she died, I'm just telling you guys, because I got a minute to tell you. Somebody in this church that I was ministering to came to my house and she was bawling and crying. And she said, I gotta tell you someone. And Sailor had just passed away. And I said, what, what? She said, Sailor came to me in a dream. It was so real. She said, and she kept saying, agape, agape, agape. I was like, what? She didn't understand. She said, my mom and dad is like the book of James. They have agape love. And then today, I want to tell you, God gave me this message. And guess who James was with all the time? Jesus. He was, they were homeboys. They were tight. They were buddies. He was always with Jesus. It was interesting that our daughter came to somebody in a dream and said that the book of James was our life. Isn't that interesting? And then it hit me today. Go ahead. Yeah, but they were tight buddy brothers. Thank you, Pastor. So he said, watch what James said. His brother, his buddy. James, ways which the Lord may provide for our lives, he says. This is what James said about everything, about praying. He says, you know what? You lust and you do not have. You murder and you covet and you cannot obtain. You fight and you war. Yet you do not have because you do not ask. But this is why you don't have what you're asking for. He says, you ask and you do not receive. Because when you're asking God, you ask amiss. That you may spend it on your pleasures. This is a different version, but I was trying to make it real simplified because i got to move on. So here's James. He's saying when you pray and God doesn't understand you because you, he's not going to answer you, it's because this is why you're not being getting your answers maybe to your prayers because he's saying they're a wrong motive. They're like a sinful motive. They're not, to, they're not to build the kingdom. They're actually to destroy the kingdom or destroy your life. He says when you have asked and you have not, it's what he's saying is you're lusting for what you don't have and you lust so bad that you're even willing to kill for it. Meaning you'll just separate your life from your family. You'll separate your life from people that you love because you don't care anymore. You just want what you want. So he's telling us, he said, you ask, but you ask and you missed. What that means is you've asked because you ask with improper motives. Like, what do you want, and why do you want it, and what is it for? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to expel on that more next week. So God's telling us, you know what? You talk plenty. You talk and talk and talk and talk and talk, but you ain't getting any results. Because he says it doesn't even matter how much you're talking. If the procedure is wrong, the judge is going to shut down your case. See, nothing makes a judge more angry than when you're in the court. Here comes, here comes the lawyer. Shuffle his face. He's not prepared. And he's talking about us. We ain't even prepared to walk into the courtroom because we ask in a mess. We don't even know what we're asking for. And do you know why? It's because the lawyer, the Holy Spirit of God that lives inside of you, he's your counselor, the Bible teaches us. I'm going to show you that next week. He's supposed to know the procedure. He's supposed to know how to ask God and petition and tell you what to say as you're writing that out, that legality, understanding, that illustration. So you come to God, though, instead, this is what happens 99% of the time, you come to God and your snot's ripping and dripping and you're, you're drinking it up. And God's saying, look, I don't understand this. This is not how I do business. 
I'm not saying that we don't cry sometimes to God. He hears our prayers. But that's not how he's going to answer. So what he's telling us, speak to me in testament. Testify on what I said. You come in this courtroom, you come in here and you petition this law. So please write that down. When you petition, you petition with law. This is the law. Go ahead. Joshua 1.8. Ron's going to read a verse. Go ahead. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Meditate on it. Be courageous when you're asking. That's what Ron's telling. Keep that book of all where? Where are you supposed to keep it? On your lips. Keep it on your mouth. Don't speak nothing else. Does he tell you to speak snot? Does he tell you to come crying? No. We get emotional. Yeah, calm yourself down. I say call your country butt down. Because I'm country. <laughs> right? <laughs> What's it say right here? Meditate on day and night. You know that's the last thing I want to do is go to church because the doors are open. Why don't I want to go to church? The devil don't want you coming. I go to church Sundays. I don't need to go Sunday night, Wednesday night. I'm good. Oh, but you've been praying for how long? But you come to church and you get to learn and you get to understand how to pray and you get to learn to meditate on the word of God day and night. And then he says when you do those things, and be careful. Look at that word, careful. Everything's written in. Then if you're careful about doing what he's asking us, he says you'll be what? Prosperous. And what? Successful. I love that. This lady. This is an awesome memory for all of us. And God, he was like all of in my business today. He wanted us to see this so much. And I'm going to take a drink. <laughs> Sheer biz energy. <laughs> Woo! Check this lady out. Do you guys remember this widow in the Bible? And she went to see the judge. I want you to read this tonight. It's Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. Now, this is really cool. I'm so glad you got to join us, Christine, because this whole message is about you. At least God was showing me that. Look at it. It's about all of us, actually. This is so cool. Now, I want you to think about yourself right now, okay? I, want, I know you're a guy, it's okay. But you can be a widower, okay? Guys... You are, right now, put yourself as a widower. Not my husband, but the rest of you guys. Okay? Women, right now, you're the widow. Right now in the Bible. Okay? You ready? She's coming before the judge. We're going to talk about it again in just a moment. The judge didn't give her anything because she was a widow or a widower. Or because this widow, she was so poor. And the Bible says she came to the judge. Why would a widow, why would you right now, as a widow or a widow, why would you go before a judge? Because you guys told me you had prayers that you wanted answered. Did you say that or not? Yeah. Okay. I want somebody to answer this question, if you can answer it. Why do you want to go before the judge? Prove your case. Prove your case? Yes. What else? Be forgiven. Be what? Forgiven. Be forgiven. That's right. But what else? What do you know? You know your rights. Got it? 
The Bible says she came to the judge because she knew her rights. And her rights came from the wall. It doesn't come from grace. Now, what does what grace actually does? Because a lot of people are mixing things up with this religious cult stuff. Because grace is where it puts you back into position so you can actually go back and obey the law. When God died and went on the cross and shed his blood, he did all that because of his grace. But he just says, like, if you break a law in any country right now and you are found guilty, guess what? They can take you out of society and they can put you for life in prison. True or not? True or false? Okay. So I want you to imagine a judge. Now the judge, remember we're going before the judge? He could decide, I like you. I like you. I like you. I like you. Because I noticed this was your first offense. I like you, though. He's watching you. Because the judge has a prerogative. Remember that. A prerogative means that the judge has the right to say the final word, no matter what. He could say, you know what, because this is your first offense, I'm just going to take your offense away. And if anybody asks how you got out of this situation that you're in right now, let them come and talk to me. Now, you didn't get away with this offense. But the judge says he took this offense upon himself and he says, I'm going to let you go. Now, you, you know what that's called? Yeah, grace. Is that graceful? Somebody do that for you? Right? That's what Jesus did. And you know what else it's called? Forgiveness, grace, and mercy. But when you leave the courtroom and you go out dancing, I'm free! I'm free! I would have to go to life in prison. I'm free! What does the judge always say to you before you leave? What? Say it out loud. Don't you dare come back here. Doesn't he say that? Huh? I don't want to see you no more. So what does he mean by that? Get your act together. You know what else it means? It's time for you to go ahead, go back out in the world, because I'm not going to lock you away. You can go back out into society, but you better obey the law again. Not forget the law and do whatever you want. See, so grace is given to us so we can actually keep this law, not destroy the law. I'm going to read this really fast so I can move on. Matthew 5, 17, he says, Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I didn't come to destroy it, but to fulfill this law. That's, a, that's Jesus. And then I'm going to quote Jesus here in Matthew 5, 19. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments. And then you go around and tell everybody else to break it. Oh, I, I broke that law. I do what I want. I, don't, I, I got I, I got a free license to sin because I've been saying that's not the same God. That's a false God you're talking about. If you say, he says, he shall be called the what? Least, Least in the kingdom of heaven. But guess what else? Read it. You shall be called great in this kingdom of heaven. That's amazing. Who wants to be great in my kingdom of heaven? Okay, now let's get this clear in the Bible. If you will actually go and study the Bible, you will study and just read it. I don't understand it. 
That's the Holy Spirit's job to help teach you. That's the pastor's job. That's my job. That's the people in the church. They come to help you understand it. If you will read it, study it, so you know how to petition God. Because you have needs. These laws, because you never can demand anything from God if you don't know what he's promised you. How are you going to talk to God about what you need if you don't even know what he's promised? Because you're so busy with so many things that you can't even remember to study the word of God. See, the devil always makes things so good. It's never bad things to do or you would be dead. He's trying to, oh, do this. It's, oh, look. I got a beautiful gold carrot. He gets you chasing down these rabbit holes. But if you don't study it, you cannot demand your rights from God. If you don't remember what he's promised you. So you need to go home, pick up your Bible, and make this new year, 2022, 2022, the year that is, say it out loud. Great. Great. You are going to be called great in the kingdom. Don't you want that for 2022? Amen. Yeah, so here's God. He's looking for evidence that is based on his promises. These are his promises. Now watch God. He's going to show us all here tonight what he's talking about and what we haven't maybe understood. I've talked about it before, but we keep missing it. We keep missing it. So this is what he tells us right here. Jeremiah 1.12, he says, say it out loud. I watch over my word to perform it. Did he say he watches over your lips? Did he say he watches over what you say and I'll do it? He watches over his word. Watch slide number two. If God watches over his word and that is what he brings to pass, not my words, not your words, so let's stop putting ourselves at a disadvantage by complaining and God grumbling. God never answers my prayers. He's not listening and everything else. And speak what? The word. the word into your situations. I love that. I found that. So he's saying if you don't give me my word back, if you don't get before the court and start telling me what I said, I can't help you. Did he say that? He watches over what word? His word. So watch this. When we pray, we are supposed to pray, if you're writing it down, two words. Precision and confidence. I'll show you. 1 John 5, 14. He says, all right, Carol and Nikki, you girls, I've seen you guys. This is your confidence that you have in approaching God that everything, he says, if we ask, what does it say? Anything. According to what? His will. What does it say he does? He hears us. There you go. Don't you want to be heard? Amen. Now, he didn't say, oh, if you pray, oh, God, I'm so mad I didn't get that job. Or I'm, you know, woo -hoo, hoping and hollering and screaming. I'm staying up all night crying and, and I'm spinning and I'm weeping. He didn't say if you do that, he'll hear you, did he? Did he? Okay. No, he doesn't. He says, if you pray according to what he intended for you, to have in the first place. That's what his will means. He intended you for whatever you wanted in the first place. It's already yours because it's your heart's desires. But you've got to find that petition and get it to God. See, then he says, you're going to know what. This is what he says. Don't you want to know what's going to happen? This is what you want to know? He says, when he hears you now, he says, if we know that he heard us, whatever what? We ask. Yeah. He says, we know that we have what we asked of him. That's in 1 John 5.15. Isn't that awesome? So because he says, if he told you to say it, because he wrote it down in this document, this legal document, then he says, I will perform what I wrote. Hello? Anybody home? All right, good. 
Did you get that? I should hear, amen. Amen. Now, never think, oh, man, I'm really not sure if this is going to work. This might be a hit or miss situation. No. No, no, no. It's always a precision prayer. You're accessing heaven as a citizen. You're going in on God's promises, and you're believing God, and you're going to tell him. And I'm going to give you a model at the end here, just a moment. Remember the persistent widow? When she went into the courtroom, when you read it tonight, guess what? She didn't care what kind of judge she was going to go see. And when you read that tonight, oh my goodness, God's like making it to where, you know how people in the world sometimes are really ugly and they just have a bad feeling going on and they're grouchy and they're irritable? Well, she went into this courtroom and she didn't care what kind of judge she was taking a look at. And I want to remind you that this judge... He didn't even fear God. He didn't even like God. He didn't even care for nobody. He didn't care for his fellow man. He was always ornery and irritable and grouchy and grumpy. And the Bible, he says, God's saying, I want you to see his disposition. Because some, some of the people that you're up against right now are ugly, spirited people, right? He wants you to see that tonight. He said, this guy hated God and he hated people. Then this poor little woman you just seen, she walks into the courtroom and she says, I come in here for my rights. Are you afraid to talk to God about your rights? Did you just learn to come in confidence? Boldness. She said, grant me justice. Against my adversary. Because she was having a problem with somebody. And the Bible says. When you read it tonight. It said. <laughs> it says. She, I, let me see if I. I did get. I'm going to read this. And I'll tell you what it says. It says. Because she kept going and going and going. She was persistent. I have rights. I don't care what the judge. I have rights. I don't want to see that lady again. She's here again. Yes she's here again. For some time, he kept refusing her. But finally, he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets what? Justice. So that she won't come. And she won't eventually come and attack me. So basically, she wore the judge out. <laughs> Sometimes we like to wear people out, right? Because we keep asking for something. To me, that's such a powerful testimony. So he was like, listen, give that lady what she came here for because she's about ready to kill me. I'm about ready to have a heart attack over this lady. Keep pounding on the door. Want to see the judge. A little widow. Poor. She brings down a powerful judge. Not because of screaming. Not because of getting mad at God. Because, and not because she kept praying loud at the top of her lungs. She did it. Just pray to impress God. She came with boldness. That's what boldness does. When you know your rights. It's not what you always do. It's how you do it. Okay? So Jesus began to teach them. And he said, first of all, here's the model prayer pattern. And I'm going to show you really quick. As you can see, this Our Father, you know what it says because I'm going to move on. Each one of these things we're going to go over next week. Guess what? These are Our Father. Guess what that is if you're taking notes. These are statements of a separate act and a concept. Our Father is a concept. Who art in heaven? That's a concept. A concept is an idea for you to know how to pray. Hallowed be thy name. That's a concept. Thy kingdom. That's a concept. Come on earth. That's a separate concept. As it is in heaven. That's a separate concept. Give us today. That's a concept. To have this day. Not a month. It doesn't say a month. Because God doesn't do business. He gives day. We're not allowed to worry about tomorrow. Don't give monthly things. He's telling you he's guiding us day by day so if you miss the concept guess what you're praying wrong that's why we have to learn how to pray give us daily bread separate concept 
Forgive us, separate concept. That means we've got problems because if you can't even forgive people that have trespassed against you, he says, those um, that you have something to do with, that's a, that's a trespass. That's a whole different concept and an idea that you've been taught. Against us, not God. It's not a trespassing against God. So when somebody trespasses against you, it didn't say you must demand for them to forgive you. Did you hear that? When somebody's done you really bad and dirty, you're not supposed to demand for them to forgive you. That's why you keep missing this concept on when God gives us this model prayer. He said, no matter what's happened to you, you must forgive them. Or your petition's going to shut down. God's not going to sign it. This is a very precise template that we're learning. Lead us not to temptation. That's a concept. Deliver us from evil. Matter of fact, that word evil is evil one in Hebrew. So he's t that's basically saying deliver us from this guy, the evil one, the devil, the de evil guy, Satan, Lucifer. He says, for the kingdom is yours. Now see, that's such a good petition in prayer. And that's why we have to cover so many things in this petition. But next week, we're going to break each concept down just like our Father who is in heaven. Because when we come before him with wisdom to represent, you know why it tells us to say are even? It's because you represent a whole community of faith, of people. And you want to receive answers from your government in 2022. Now, I'm gonna, I told you I was going to give you a really quick example. Listen, for tonight's message, what I'm talking about, is there anybody here that can't have children or would like to have children? Okay. Are you barren? Because I've had people come to me that was barren. And this is how. Okay. Well, guess what? God has a case for people that want to have a child and they're barren. Do you want to see where it's at? I didn't put it up there, but you want to know where it's at? It's found in Deuteronomy 28, 4. And this is what it says. Well, I'm going to show you. I can grab a case, Deuteronomy 28, 4. I'm going to pull out a case right now. I'm going to show you a petition. And when I grab this case from my law book, just like last week, remember Sarah? She was, what, uh, uh, 90 years old and she was too weak and frail to have a baby? Well, guess what? She and her husband couldn't... Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Her husband, Abraham, he believed God's promises, correct? Yes. Well, guess why? He knew that God made a promise. So guess what it says? She was barren. She could not have children for 75 years. Now, don't judge people because you think they can't even have children, but they just don't know how to pray. Don't even joke about it, whatever you have, because if you don't understand what to do, this is how you're supposed to pray. Lord, I'm petitioning in the courtroom tonight on behalf of my friend that showed up here at the church, uh, I think it was two years ago, Lord, the, the Bible says in Deuteronomy 28, 4, the womb of the righteous shall be fruitful. As you said in section Deuteronomy 28, 4, Lord, so I'm standing in the gap and believing as a citizen of heaven. I got the spirit on me just saying it. Somebody must be going to have a baby. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. First come, first serve. <laughs> But see, when you remind God of what he said, this is what I did. Oof. Put pressure on God. Did I just put pressure on God? Not for you guys. I just keep pointing that way. <laughs> <laughs> you put pressure on God because every case in this room is in this book. Every case that you have right now is in this book. Every case. Every answered prayer is in this book. See, we just have to understand that there's a case for every situation and that's why you must what? Read the Bible. You have to read the Bible so you can get things from God because he's been waiting his whole life to give it to you. But you have to realize that you keep turning away because of unbelief. Unbelief is what, Tracy? Sin. 
There you go. So when you have unbelief, you can't trust God. You can't have belief and unbelief in their same temple here. God don't hear you. But you believe everything in Jesus' name. So thank you for watching. I'm going to pray. Thank you for watching, darlings.